Good evening. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Getting kind of late in the evening here and getting a little chilly. We're at nights around here, it's getting down to about 46 degrees, which makes it really pleasant. Uh, starting to, sun's starting to go down, and I don't know if you can hear them on there. The coyotes are singing back out here in the field. And, uh, but I want to do a, I want to tell you a story, okay? If you don't mind, if you'll let me do that. Uh, I got another one of these Oliva V, uh, uh, Oliva V Liga Especial. Liga is Spanish for blend. So it's a special blend. Um, I want to do, I almost did a video on cigars, but I don't, I don't know. I've gotten a lot of questions on them and, and I really would like to kind of talk why cigars and go into it, but I'm going to wait. So I want to hear from you feedback. If this is something more people, um, might be interested in. And if not, I won't waste your time with it. Okay. So in 2002, uh, a good buddy of mine who's a contractor had gone over to China to uh, help build some buildings for an NGO, a non-government uh, organization. For a, uh, They were going to do a, a dairy farm for poor folks. All right. So uh, he called me and said, hey, he called me from China and said, we got uh, this thing going and they've got a horse or two out here and they want to know if I know anybody that breaks horses. Would you be willing to fly to China uh, to train horses? Uh, at least one horse to start with for this bunch. And I, sh sure, um, man, who wouldn't? Why not? So I, I loaded up a, a duffel bag with a, with a saddle in it and, and some clothes and, and they bought me a ticket and I flew to China. Now, this is the part, China's absolutely huge. And this is part of China where China and North Korea and Russia all intersected right at this point. Okay. So they said, what do you need? And I said, I need a 50 foot round pin. I've talked about this in another video. Well, when I got there, uh, the setup, they didn't know any better. They did the best they could. The setup was not ideal. And I had about a, it was about a five year old stud uh, kind of a Mongolian, I think it was a, like a Mongolian breed horse. He was short, pretty thick and stocky, a nice horse, good, good natured. And so, but I had very few days, I had very few days to train that horse. And, and so I did the best I could and I was getting ready to leave. And I'm like, I need to take this horse out and put some miles on this horse. And so, and lo and behold, that day they came in and they had just bought another horse. Now this, this little mare was supposed to have been ridden before she was supposed to have been broke. We need to see what she was. And uh, so my buddy who called me over there, Donnie, Donnie was a rider. He grew up uh, and he had done some work in South Dakota on ranches and stuff. And, and uh, so one day we said, all right, we're going to rain. It rained 19 days. I only had a 30 day visa. It rained for 19 days. And so we out there one day, I said, okay, I'm going to take this stud out. And so, Donnie, you want to ride that little mare? Yeah, I'll ride that little mare. Well, I had brought my saddle from the States with me. But all we could find for Donnie to ride on that little mare was like a little, it was like a Chinese military, Mongolian military saddle. And there was no saddle blanket. Now, I don't know if I was more... Well, I do know too. I was more redneck at that point than cowboy. So we didn't have a saddle blanket. So we found a flat squashed down pillow, a bed pillow. And she was a little mare. So we put that pillow on there and put that Mongolian saddle on her. It, kind of, it looked kind of like a, like a McClellan type saddle. It was, a, it was a military saddle. And we saddled these horses up. I was on this this stud and he was on this little mare. Neither horse was very big. And so we headed out. So there was a narrow, long gravel lane that went out to a little narrow gravel road. And uh, so they told me, they said, if you go left down this gravel road a few miles, you hit Russia. Russia's right there. Now I had already been to the North Korean border and I went to the border and there was a brass um, bar embedded in the concrete and they said that brass bar is the border 
If you step across that line right there, you're in North Korea. So I walked up to the line and uh, the North Korean guards were there, you know, with their rifles. And I walked up the line, there's an interpreter. So I asked, I said, can I just put my foot across that line? Just say I've been in North Korea. The answer was a very definite no. They were very clear about that. That was not acceptable. So I, so anyhow, we were on these borders. So we headed out down this gravel, this lane, and turned down this road. And uh, and the horses were doing, they were doing good. They, they were they were a little bit um, unsure, but they weren't they weren't humped up. They didn't have a hump in their back, and they were moving along pretty good. So just as soon as we turned and headed down that gravel road, this this little bitty Chinese car came up behind us, went around us, and as they went around us, they honked a horn, beep beep. Now they were just being friendly, but the little colt I was on, he he he's like, he just kind of hunched up. He didn't he didn't like that too much. Well, we went on, another car came up. This is a like a one lane gravel road. There's never any traffic out there. Another car comes up. Little bitty Chinese car passes, beep beep. They're just being friendly as they go by. Strange sight to see out there. A couple of Americans on horseback heading out through there. And I don't, there must have been five or six of these little cars passed us in a short period of time going around. And every one of them had to beep their horn, beep beep. And the horses kept getting a little bit more nervous, a little bit more nervous. And uh, I'm like, man, what is going on? Well, I saw just down the road, off to the right, there was a small brick building that they had just built, and it looked like every one of these cars was turning in, turning into that building there. And so I told Donnie, I said, if we can get past that house, I think all the traffic's going to stop and we'll be all right. Well, the horses were starting to bunch up, and they were starting to get a little bit agitated and feeding off each other, but we we just, we get calm and kept moving them down the road and and uh, just as we got to that driveway and i figured okay we're home free somebody set off a string of firecrackers you know the kind you get a fourth of july like it's got like the black cats that are all tied together and and uh, you light one and they all go off well somebody had set a string of them off at that building and the two horses said no we we didn't we didn't sign up for this but amazingly enough, I don't know if it's just their good nature or, or my good horse training, they didn't go nuts. But they definitely got up and got agitated over those firecrackers going off. And we, I said, okay, we can get on by and we'll be all right. We got just a few yards down the road and they set off another bigger string of those firecrackers. My colt said, no, that's it. I'm done. I, I've had enough. And he tried to take off. Donnie's mare was feeding off of him. She tried to take off. Well, I noticed out of the corner of my eye that Donnie's saddle, his little Mongolian military saddle on his bed pillow, was starting to roll. And I I tried to reach out and grab hold of the headstall of, of his mare to help him, but my colt was he wasn't having it. And and it was getting out of hand. And so finally I just said, All right, go go. I've never been on a horse that can run faster than I can ride. And I said, Donnie's a good hand. I don't have to worry about him. He'll, he'll, he'll be all right. And so I just said, go. And that little rascal put his belly to the ground and took off at a dead run down that road. Now, sometimes life is going to run away with you. Now, sometimes you can pull it in and sometimes you can't. Sometimes you get in a situation and all you can do is let it run. And so I let that little rascal run and I just sat there in the saddle and I just stayed calm. I didn't saw in his mouth, didn't try to pull him in. I just said, son, you've earned it. It's all right. Go. And when and horses, so much of horses like life, if safety is not an issue, sometimes you got to let them just get it out of their system. It's okay. All right. So we're heading at a dead run down that down that road, and then I think to myself, oh, Russia. Russia's at the end of this road. Now this is gonna be quite a sight. An American cowboy on a Mongolian horse in China at a dead run running through Russia. 
this could get western well we ran and it must have been a mile or so down there and when we come around the curve there was like a 12 foot tall chain link fence that's all that was there on the other side of that fence were trees russian trees by that time the little horse had run himself out and so i pulled him in easy and he pulled up easy to that fence and and I got down and loosened the cinch on the saddle and just kind of petted him, talked to him, calmed him down, let him blow. We stood there for a minute and Donnie comes limping up, leading his little mare. <clears throat> and so we reset the saddle and everything on his horse and let the horses stand there and blow. And then we turned around and headed back towards the farm, quiet and thoughtful and hopefully a little bit wiser. Um, and you know, I thought about that and a lot of times in life, things seem like a runaway and you can't stop it. And the harder you try to stop it, the more damage you're going to do. And sometimes you just got to enjoy the ride. And you think at the end down there, you're going to have rough Russian soldiers and fur hats with AK 47s, but you're not going to know until you get down there. And when you get down there, what? you may find is a big old fence that's going to stop the runaway and uh and so what you wind up with is a heck of a ride and a good story to tell well we made it back to the farm and i had to fly out the next couple of days just before i flew out somebody came in with an interpreter and the chinese folks had sent their apologies from that little building down there. They heard what had happened and they sent their apologies. Uh, they didn't understand it. None of that was intended. So what happened was that was a little government building of some sort, a little government outpost that they had just built and they were dedicating that day. And so in China, to dedicate a new building, they set off firecrackers to scare off the evil spirits. And I always thought, you know, if evil spirits ride horses, I could see how that might work. 